Welcome back to another episode of Sean's Stance. Today, we are going to talk about why there are judging inconsistencies. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and turn on notifications, and come do this live with us on Instagram every weekday night at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time. And if you would like to come work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you have to go. We do hair, makeup, suits, and posing, all of the fun stuff when it comes to working with competitors in the female divisions. This is actually based off of a comment that came into my YouTube channel today, uh, based on the uh, video that we put up this morning. And it's actually some of the things that I've heard in the podcasts and you know blogs and things like that that have come out since the Arnold. Uh, you know, inconsistencies in judging. Specifically, this is in relation to bikini because that's what was at the Arnold, so that's what everybody was talking about. There are a lot of um, uh, podcasts, things like that, that are dedicated to the bodybuilding side of our sport, the men, uh, and not a ton of them that are de dedicated to the women. So when you're listening to the men talk about bikini, <laughs> it's a little bit hilarious. <laughs> so, um, one of the, the questions was asked was why are there inconsistencies when it comes to what is being rewarded in a bikini, um, you know, from the local level to the national to the pro level, things like that. So uh, I'm kind of going to break it down from two different angles today for you, uh, from the angles of the competitor angle and the angles from the judging angle as well. Um, now, the first thing is, and what you should all realize at this point, is that when you go to a local level show as a competitor, there's no requirement to enter that show. You pay your entry fee, you show up, you compete. You don't have to qualify for it, nothing. You just show up that day. So what that means is there's a lot of ladies that jump on stage that are really outside of the criteria for their particular division that they decide to step on stage for. You know, in this scenario, we'll talk about bikini because again, that's where these comments are coming from from the Arnold this past weekend. Um, so what happens is the judges are put into a predicament where they've got, you know, 10 girls in front of them and maybe all of them are a little bit outside the criteria. Well, what do you do? Somebody's got to win that day. Somebody's got to take first, somebody's got to take second, somebody's got to take third and so on and so forth. So you try to fit people into a box that is as close to the criteria as you can. For some people, that will, for some shows, that will mean that the re they're going to reward somebody who's more muscular that's maybe a little bit too muscular for the, for the division. For some shows, that may mean that they will reward somebody that's too lean, maybe too lean for that division, and vice versa. Maybe some shows they're going to reward somebody that's a little bit too soft or a little bit under muscle, muscularity, that kind of thing. The judges are in a hard spot right there because they do have to just choose from what showed up that day. And maybe there's nobody that really fits the criteria very well. Over the years of, you know, the over a decade of me going to these shows, I can tell you that when I go to a local show, like a regular, just local show anybody can join, there may be one competitor in each division that fits the criteria. Maybe. Maybe. One. That's it. It's very rare when you go to one of these local shows that you're going to find a, um, a show where everybody fits the criteria because you don't even see that in the pro league. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the judges are in a tough spot at that point, right? They've got to pick who's close enough to that, to, that, to that criteria box, whoever's close enough, okay? So then you go up to the national level as a competitor. Now at this point, you have to have qualified for nationals, okay? So you can't just walk up onto a national stage and get on that stage, you can't do that. You do have to qualify. This year, the qualifications have been top five in every class qualify. So again, if you're at a small show and there's only five girls in your class, automatically you qualify, right? Which that's not typical. Usually it's top two in every class qualify for nationals. Uh, but because of COVID and things like that, less shows, they made it uh, more open to, to more competitors each show, each class. So again, even at national level, not everybody's going to fit the criteria because depending on who showed up that day, like I already said, when you're at a local level show, there may be one girl in that whole pack in the whole division that actually fits the criteria. So that means that every class, five girls have qualified from every class that don't actually fit the criteria, right? So now those five girls from every class are like, oh, I'm nationally qualified. I'm going to go to nationals they're still not qualified for nationals. They're still not in the criteria for nationals. 
right? So at this point now, you've got that one girl that, that actually looked good, that was in the criteria for that, for that actual class and that division. And then you got a whole bunch of other girls up there too. So even at the national level. Now at the national level, you're going to get a few more that are going to fit the criteria a little bit better, right? Usually that first call out, even into the second call out, you'll see a lot of girls that really fit well into the criteria. And then once you get outside like the top 10 to top 15, uh, then you start seeing pe girls that probably should have stayed at the local level, worked a little bit more, tried to get towards the criteria a little bit better before they actually moved up to the national level. Totally fine. That's part of it. You know, I tell people that all the time too. When I first went to nationals, my first my first national show was junior nationals, and I went just because I wanted to see what I would look like stacking up next to national level competitors. Because where I was competing, my class local level was like three girls. So I knew I needed to get in front of some national girls and next to some national girls so I could understand what my physique needed to do in order to be competitive there. So that's fine. That's part of it. It's all part of it. Part of figuring out where you fit. You know. So still, even at the national level, you're gonna see some classes where maybe the girl's a little bit too hard or maybe she's a little bit too muscular and she wins because all the other things are in place. She's got a great shape, she's got a great look, she's got great presentation, you know, all those kinds of things. So even though she may be a little bit too big for the, for the division or a little bit too, too conditioned for the division, she's still gonna win, right? Because she's the one that got the closest to that box, got the closest to that criteria, okay? Then you go up to the pro level at this point. Now, almost everybody fits the criteria now. You're always gonna have one or two that probably need some time in the gym or whatever. Maybe they, maybe they even overshot, that happens too. Sometimes you get to be too big for your, for your division. You need to go to another division, that kind of thing. Um, what's her name? Natalia. Kalejo, she's a perfect example. She made it to the Olympia and figure and in women's physique. She would never do well at the Olympia and figure because she was too big and she was too conditioned for figure. So she went up to women's physique and now she's like crushing it, women's physique, right? So that happens too in the pro league. But you've got five girls that are, six girls that are in that first call out. All of them fit the criteria really well. So this is where they start breaking down, okay, this girl has the best conditioning on her on her overall frame. This girl's a little bit soft in her glutes. This girl is a little bit washed out in her in her midsection. Uh, you know, all those things, those little those details come to place at the pro league, right? So at that point, usually at the pro level, you're seeing girls that are really close to that criteria box. Okay? Really close. You know, like I mentioned about the judging at the Arnold, the criteria judging at the Arnold was spot on. Perfect. Like it went exactly how it should have at the Arnold based on my own eyes, but <laughs> you know, based on what the judging was right now, the piece that we have, we haven't talked about is the judging piece of it, the judges piece of it, right? One of the reasons why the criteria at the Arnold was held so well is because you've got Sandy and you've got Tyler who are the, the best of the best of the best judges judging that lineup. They are the ones that set the criteria. They are the ones that judge specifically for the criteria. So that's why at that show, you see the criteria being held to a T because they're the ones that set it, that put it in place. Just like a competitor has to go from the local level to the national level to the pro level, so do judges. Judges start out judging at the local level. Then based on how well they do as a judge, they get promoted up and get promoted up and get promoted up to Olympia level. Olympia level judges don't start out as Olympia level judges, right? They start at out at local level and some local level judges will never make it up to the Olympia level. They're just not good enough. Just like anything else just like any other sport, just like any other job, you get promoted based on your skill set. You do have to pass certain criteria and certain tests in order to become a judge in the first place. But then from that point on, you do get evaluated as a judge. Judges are held to standards too. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but they are. So what that also means is that sometimes you're gonna have judges on the local level who are not great at what they do. They're good. 
They're good enough to be on the judging panel, but they're not good enough to move up. Right? I'm sure some of you guys have been in front of judging panels that know exactly what they're doing. Right? They know exactly what they're looking for. That's why when you go to these national shows or you go to the, the pro shows and things like that, you stay afterwards to go talk to Sandy or to go talk to Becky. Becky's another one that's way up there on the top. You know, you talk to those people because they are the best judges out there. Not necessarily the case when you are at Joe Schmo's show in Backwoods, Tennessee. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that is where you can also get some judging inconsistencies. Because you will have people on those panels at the local level shows who are not well versed in judging bikini competitors. You know, you'll have judges at the local level who are really good at judging one division and just eh at the others. Right? You'll have judges that are fantastic at judging open men's bodybuilding at the local level, but they don't know anything about bikini. They know enough that they became a judge, but when it comes to real critiques and feedback, they don't know what they're looking at. It's true. It's just like any other job, just like any other position, and just like what you as a competitor have to go through when you go from local, national, and pro level. Yes, 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 right, yes. It's true, you guys. How many of you, let's just use this as the apple, since, since, Por since Portia just mentioned this, how many of you have been told at a local level show that you should be a different division than what you're doing? I know you have. I know you have, because I've had to talk you down. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that's what your goal is in your scenario. Goals to go to national level. And if you switched over to that other division that the local level judges told you to go to, you would have gotten crushed at the national level. <laughs> you already know. I sure do. <laughs> I sure do already know. <laughs> you got to understand that they don't always have a great eye when you're moving up in the ranks. There you go, Susan. You're another one right there. Yeah, yeah, Raven, you're bikini. Uh, yes, you're bikini. <laughs> I've had people tell me now that I should go back to figure because I'm starting to build more muscle. You know what I mean? No, I am not figure. I'm not. I was when I was an amateur. I'm not now. I'm not now. No. If I was a, if I was a local level, maybe. If I was a local level, but not pro level. Not even close. So you have to remember who you're talking to. And what your goal is. That is number one. Okay? And always remember that. Like I said, people forget that just because they are a local level judge doesn't necessarily mean that they understand your division fully. And they don't understand your goals fully either. Right? Same. I'm bikini. LOL. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and God love them. They're just trying to do a good job too. But they do have to build up in ranks. They have to keep moving up. Like in order for a local level judge to move up to the national level, they have to go test judge at the national level and they have to pass tests in order to move up. Just like any other job. That's why you guys, when I tell you like to get your feedback and things like that, I think it's really important to get feedback from whoever. If you're at a local level show, first of all, if you're at a local level show that is a national qualifier, they have to have at least one national level judge on that panel. That's the person you should be getting your feedback from. That's the person you should be getting your feedback from. Okay. People are slow sometimes too. I had a men's physique guy tell me I should be figure because I have a muscular back. <laughs> I'm like, so we just got to ignore the rest of my body, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. That's why I laugh sometimes when I hear guys talk about female divisions because they really don't know what they're talking about. They really don't. A lot of them. I won't say all of them, but a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them don't. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know, right? For real. For real. Yeah. No, same thing for me. It's like I, I was told I should go back to figure now because my shoulders are starting to grow. I'm like, dude, do you not see the rest of me? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not figure. I am not pro level figure. Uh-uh. It's not happening. Uh-uh. Let's just ignore the rest of my frame. Right. <laughs> exactly. 
So that's why I say, like, remember to go to the judges that are ultimately responsible for getting you to the next level that you want to go to, right? That's what you want to do. That's why you see inconsistencies in judging sometimes. Because sometimes, to be honest with you, the judges aren't that great yet. They got to work to get better. You know, a local level judge is not going to see things with the same eyes that Sandy Williamson sees them with. Just not, just not going to happen. Sorry. Just not going to happen. So we're just going to ignore the rest, right? Grateful when I started, I did muscle contest shows and Tamer and Tarek always had judged. Yeah, so they're fantastic with feedback, by the way. You know, if you go to some of these, perfect example, muscle contest, you know, they do um, local and they, they do national and pro shows too. And they're fantastic at feedback. They're really, really good at feedback. I actually went to Tamer after um, after the Arnold and asked him his thoughts on the on the different uh, girls and stuff like that, uh, just to get some feedback so that I knew what to respond to you guys about, you know. So yeah, I mean they're they're really good. They stick around. They they give you your feedback. They want you to be better. You know, those are the people that you want to listen to. Those are the people you want to listen to, right? Not Joe Schmo from Backwoods, Tennessee. Nothing against Backwoods, Tennessee, because I used to live in Backwoods, Tennessee. So that's why I keep saying that. <laughs> Any questions, you guys? Any questions on why that I wanted to bring this topic up? You know? And also, I want to mention this, too, because this was mentioned in the, in the YouTube con co uh, comment. When it comes to getting your feedback, go to the judges and don't listen to social media. I know I'm social media right now. I get that. I understand that. But Becky actually put out a story about this right after the Arnold was over with about talking about going to get your feedback from the people who actually judge you versus the people that are just talking online. And I know I'm one of those people talking online, but I'm still telling you to go get your judging feedback. <laughs> I'm still telling you to go do that. <laughs> I'm not telling you that my, my word supersedes the judge's word. It doesn't. It doesn't. Go get your feedback from the judges, right? Any questions, you guys? I'll leave it open for a minute. But if you just keep that in mind, you know, and remember that there's levels not only to the physiques, but there's levels to the judging as well, that will help you better understand, you know, why some, some shows go the way that they do. You know, there's going to be certain judging panels at the local level, like I mentioned, where, you know, physiques will come in and like I said, nobody really fits the criteria well. So there's, they, they have a tendency at this particular judging panel to judge more muscular, or they have a tendency at this judging panel to judge a little bit less muscular. You know, that's just what they do. That's their tendencies and their, their, they, that's the way that they go. But again, nobody really fits the criteria. So they got to pick a, a middle line somewhere, you know, um, I said that about one of our girls that just did wellness. She just did her second wellness show. Her first wellness show, she crossed over from wellness to figure. Well, figure to wellness. She's a figure competitor moving to wellness. And she ended up placing like last in her class for wellness. And I said, well, that's because you got so lean that you were outside of the criteria for wellness. I said, you were lean because you were doing figure. I said, you need to be lean and conditioned for figure. Absolutely, 100%. But that actually hurts you when you went into wellness. And they're not going to reward that in wellness because they don't want to see that in wellness. Right, so that's why she comes in fuller for her next wellness show and she wins the overall because she committed to that one division. So, you know, that's a good example right there. When is a good time to get feedback after finals are done? Yes, after finals are done. You don't want to go up to the judges while they're at the table, first of all. <laughs> and you also don't want to go to them between pre judging and finals either. You don't want to do that either. Most shows will tell you if they want you to come talk to them after the show or if they want you to email in. Um, every judging panel is a little bit different as far as how they like to do it. Like Sandy and Becky and all of them, they love to give feedback at the show because then they don't have to respond to you through email. <laughs> a lot of judges are like that. I would prefer you go get your feedback right after the show. That's what I'd prefer for you. Um, and and most, most judges prefer that too because then they don't have to sit there and wait and, and respond to a half dozen emails every five minutes. You know what I mean? So um, that's typically the case. Um, I respect your opinion. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I wouldn't tell you anything to steer you wrong. That's the first thing, right? And I always defer back to, you know, my opinion, my stance, Sean's stance. See, see how, see how you, see how I weeded that in there, you know? 
my opinion is my opinion alone. It's not the opinion of anybody else's, right? So go to the judges. You, you need to go talk to the judges. Now I'll tell you, my feedback is probably going to mirror theirs. Those of you guys that have worked with me, you know that. <laughs> but go talk to them anyway. You know, I, some of the girls know I've gone with them to go get judging feedback. You know, I'd rather you go talk to them. Because that just solidifies in your mind that I know what I'm talking about, first of all. <laughs> I'm like, I want you to go get that judging feedback because I know it's going to be the same thing that I was saying. Right? News is for it. Wondering why some competitors look for X and some S. Are they always looking for both? Um, it depends on the division, not the, comp not the competition. It depends on the division as far as what they're looking for. Right? In general, um... The S frame is bikini, X is every other division except for wellness. Wellness is bottom heavy. So it's not the competition, it's the division. Okay. Any other questions? And yeah, bikini, you know, two years ago was looking for more of an X, was going towards looking for more of an X, not anymore. You know, they're back to the S frame, back to the S frame. So, which is good. They're toning the, toning the actual division down, which I do like. Let's just say that way. All right, guys. Well, if there's no other questions, then I'm going to wrap this up for tonight. Uh, as I Thank you for joining us. Once again, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. Also, let us know what other questions you have and what other content you'd like to hear. We'll see you right back here for our next installment of Sean's Stance.